Good morning, everyone. It is Dr. Arlene Bianco, the multidimensional MD. I'm starting here just a little bit late in case you were looking for me. I'm here now and ready to talk about how to balance your masculine and feminine energies for healing. So first of all, um, if you haven't liked or subscribed, please do. I always love to hear from everyone and to connect with you and to know where you're from. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If there's anything that you would like to hear about, then I'm happy to see if I can do another live stream on that as well. So first, with masculine and feminine energies, what I want to clarify is this is not based on gender. We all have masculine and feminine energies. And so I want to tease that apart, explain what those energies are, and then how do you actually balance them? Because when they are balanced, we feel more whole, we feel more alive, we feel more like ourselves. And naturally, we have all different constitutions. And so some people will have more masculine energies and some people have more feminine energies. And as a generality, more uh, females tend to have more feminine energy and more males tend to have more male energy, but that is completely fluid. As we know, gender itself is a fluid construct and these energies are also very fluid. So, First, I want to show you the symbol of the yin and yang. And this is a symbol of Taoism, which is a philosophy um, based on teachings of a 6th century BC sage, Lao Tzu. And I actually happened to study this in college. I think that if I didn't have to um, fill my classes with so many science and like pre-med things that I could have easily majored in philosophy. So I love these things that are a bit more esoteric and, and hopefully we can um, simplify them enough where it's easy to talk about and become something practical and useful for you. Okay, so I want to take the intangible and make it more tangible for you. So anyway, this is the yin yang symbol, as we call it over here. And um, as you can see, it's got these two similar parts and they're both flowing into each other. So if you actually imagine these, this rotating like fishes kind of rotating around, they flow into each other. So it is not about a strict black and white concept. It is much more fluid, it is ever changing, and it is, um, it's meant to be relative to each other. And that's what these dots are too. And it's that there are parts of the masculine and the feminine, and there are parts of the masculine in um, the feminine. But if I said that, but you know, vice versa, however I said it. So um, yes, and imagine that like fishes kind of like swirling around. So ever changing, it is not a constant and it's a very fluid structure. So sometimes when things are so fluid, it's hard for people to like pinpoint. So you got that fluid, ever changing and they're parts of each other in the other. So um, then to kind of separate these are uh, the concepts of like masculine energies and feminine energies. Um, I want to be sure that you know that these are not strict separations, but just to give us a framework of what to talk about. And anytime we're talking about a large concept, a kind of truth, then um, it's like we can't ever really fully explain it in words, but we can talk about it enough so that we have some sort of understanding. It's like talking about the universe or God. You can't really ever explain it fully, but we can talk about it and we can have a better understanding. Um, so the masculine feminine concept is a concept of duality, which we do live in a world of duality. And I'm going to talk more about that in a moment after we can clarify the masculine and feminine. So yin is considered feminine and yang is considered masculine. The moon in the night is feminine. The sun in the day is masculine. And you can see how that's really ever flowing into each other because you have the night goes into the day and the day goes into the night. So it's this constant flow. 
Feminine is also more receiving, masculine is more giving. Um, feminine is more nourishing, nurturing, masculine is providing. So you can see how there can, can be somewhat similar, but there's slight differences to it. Feminine tends to be more peaceful, masculine tends to be more assertive. Feminine tends to be more creative and innovative. Masculine tends to be more stable and steady. Feminine can be more vulnerable, and I don't mean that in a um, in a bad way, in a negative way at all. Vulnerability is actually really beautiful, and Brene Brown talks about this a lot. And masculine can be confident. So vulnerability is also, to me, a form of strength and confidence. So these are Mm, not entirely opposites. Again, so there's pieces of the other in each one. So feminine is also more flowing and intuitive, um, kind of lead from the heart, and masculine is more logical, linear, analytical. You can see how um, there can be many different kind types of smarts and intelligence, and one is not necessarily better than the other, but um, if you combine the two, then you have something even uh, just has more magnificence to you. You just uh, break through maybe some some barriers. Feminine tends to be more authentic and masculine is honest. So see similar but slightly different. And this also depends on how you define the word. So please don't get tripped up on eat any particular word. Feminine is more open and masculine has more boundaries. So both are important. Important. It is important to be very open, but it's also important to have boundaries to, um, to not leak your energy and take care of yourself. So feminine is compassionate, masculine is caring, very similar, and both are protective and supportive. And if we look at the body, we can divide the body in different ways, but if we do left and right sides, then the left side of the body tends to be more feminine. The right side of the body tends to be more masculine. So left side feminine, and that's what they call like more right brain. And then because it crosses from the brain, crosses, those connections cross. And the right side of the body is considered more left brain. Again, this is not such a strict concept and um, it can be different in different people. But I also feel this in the body. I can feel the emotional body. And, and sometimes it can be helpful to delve into that a little bit more when we're, we're listening to the messages of the body. So after my dad passed, I had this achiness in my right shoulder. And the strange thing is my sister, one of my sisters had the same kind of shoulder pain. And again, right side of the body is more masculine. So this can can be mass um, relationships with male figures in your life. And so that to me, it was very easy to make sense of. I was just feeling this ache of, of my dad's crossing over and my sister had the same experience. However, um, you can have like, I have seen people with, um, for example, this one patient I had, she also had a shoulder pain on her right side and it actually had to do with her mom, but it was because of a financial argument, an argument over money. So money, finances are more analytical. It, it is the domain of the masculine. And so um, that was really interesting. So you see, there's not, these are not hard line constructs that is much fluid, but at the same time, it can be useful if you're interested to feel, hear, listen to the stories of the body, um, because then it helps you to make sense of yourself, to understand yourself on many different layers. And the more understanding you have of yourself, it is always more healing, because if we really know ourselves, then we can feel more whole. So it's uh, understanding where maybe you could support yourself as well. So um, that is the yin yang, and then and that's the masculine and feminine. And I wanted to read you this one this saying from Lao Tzu. It is the way begot one, and then one two, then two begot three, and three all else. 
So I told you I really like philosophy and esoteric things. So the way, the way is like the universe, the divine God. Um, so this is reminiscent of the Adam and Eve story and it also the Trinity. So um, it is like in Catholic religion, uh, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, but then we also have our triune nature as humans, which is mind, body, and spirit. So we can see these themes kind of come up in different ways. So the way begot one, God created one and then two, and then the two that's having a child had th three and three all else. So um, this is actually represented, I'm going to explain this a bit more, in something called the Fleur de Lis. And let me draw that for you. I will try. I'm not a, the best drawer, but the Fleur de Lis. So um, it is something that looks like this. And then it has like, so that's a what they call Fleur de Lis. Okay, so that is, 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 does represent, yes, New Orleans and French nobility, but it is so much deeper than that, okay, because there's a trinity there. And so this is the masculine, the feminine coming together, a wholeness, and then that's the child, like, emerging in the middle, and this fleur de lis is also representative of something called a triple flame. So this triple flame of energy is created by the masculine and feminine energies integrating. And then it's like integrating in the heart center. And then that flame is that child, the three braided together and then coming up. So this is such a beautiful concept because you imagine this heart flame coming up to your throat and then to your your brain your mind and so when you allow that you can see how the heart is leading how you speak and how you think and with this magnificent integration of those two energies and then something new is produced from there and that's why from three all else because from this um, unif unifying of the masculine and feminine energies, then from that we can create all else. So this is from, this is the heart flame. And it's really neat because I can actually feel this uh, in the osteopathic treatments. Um, it's not an osteopathic concept, but I can feel it having trained in cranial osteopathy um, and, and other things too, and energy medicine. And so to feel people's heart triple flames and when they're, the masculine and feminine are not balanced, then that triple flame can feel really small. But when they are, that's when you see that light in people's eyes and that they're able to um, just live, feel free and live their authentic selves. And so that's a really neat. So anytime you want to um, create something in the world or uh, just uh, be able to you know, creation is a feminine concept, but be able to like put that out in reality. You do need like that analytical, logical part of the masculine. So when you bring those together, then you can really produce something beautiful in the world. And we need that so much now. This is why I'm taking the time to explain some of these more esoteric concepts, because I really want people to understand and to be able to heal in a way um, that has more depth to it. So a multi-dimensional concept. Um, so when we balance those, then we actually enter quantum. And so the quantum energy is where, where the, those miracles and um, things can be even better than you expected. And it's a balancing. It's a get kind of in a way stepping out of duality, but to step out of duality, you actually have to accept the whole. So when you see the yin-yang symbol, it's like 
instead of being more on one side, being the other, um, which we naturally will be, but be able to back out and see the grander perspective and see the whole. So as soon as you see the whole, then you can get out of duality and enter quantum. So I'm going to go through um, a handful of ways that you can do that. And the first is conscious awareness. So being consciously aware of these masculine and feminine energies, just knowing where you might need some help or, um, and I don't mean help that you necessarily have to go seek help, although that can be um, a really good thing to do, especially if you need to balance your feminine that you can, um, and masculine that you can receive help or so masculine is giving. So if you need to receive, then maybe ask for help. So see where in this that you might need some help. And um, then you want to start reparenting yourself because I know um, people say that the way you speak to your child becomes the voice in their head. Um, so yes, that can be true to an extent, but at some point, then we get to grow up. And if we become more conscious and awake of ourselves and how we can choose our lives and how we'd like to be, then we can also choose to reparent our thoughts. And so this is, and to do that, you ask, what would a loving father say in this situation? What would a loving mother say in this situation? You know, and you say those things to yourself. If those questions are difficult for you to contemplate or answer, then you could also imagine like, what would a best friend say? What would, that would be helpful. Just and sit, give yourself some time and space to meditate on this. You could do a stream of consciousness journaling on these questions, or you could just sit and meditate and acknowledge where you are now. And that's okay, because if you, you need want to shift your thoughts, you need to be able to be aware of where they are now. Otherwise, you're on unstable ground. If you um, try to be anything else than where you are at this moment, then um, it's it's not quite right. So you have to recognize where you are and then choose to reparent in a very gentle and loving way. It's not bulldozing your old thoughts down. It's gently guiding and reframing and create choosing to create new thoughts. So you're as you create these new thoughts consciously, then feel into these thoughts. So if you are, um, you say that you're choosing to reparent yourself and you want to, you're saying that you can do it, that you can change and that whatever that you want to be, that you can do it and you are strong enough to do it. And you want to be able to feel what it feels like to be supported in a way that is just infinitely supported. So you do that for yourself and then you want to feel that. Like, what does that feel like? This really loving embrace for yourself because it's very important to, comp to combine those new thoughts with the feeling of it to um, bring the experience to more life. It makes it alive. So if we just leave it in terms of the cognitive understanding and the thoughts, it's not really fully alive or experiencing a human uh, experience. So you need both to the thoughts and the feelings um, and support the masculine feminine sides as needed. So if you feel that from looking at that list before that your feminine side could use some support, then perhaps turn to things like art where you can create something. Um, it could just be like doodle drawings or it could just be abstract paintings. 
there's not a right or wrong to it. It's the exploration of it that will help to support it. It's a, so you're being doing it at the same time. If you feel you need to support the masculine, then since you're more aware of it, then you want to see how can you organize things in your life? How can you have a more regular schedule or um, plan things out so that it has more of a rhythm to it that feels like not too too open and fluid like the feminine where it's it, it feels good to sometimes have some boundaries and that gives you some stability so take a look and do some logistical planning if you need to support the masculine and you're going to be do this at the same time so you're going to think it you're going to reparent ask what your your loving father mother self would say to you or your best friend would say to you and feel those new consciously created thoughts and then support your masculine and feminine sides as needed and then you can also combine movement with it so again remember we said the left side of the body is more feminine and the right side of the body is more masculine so anytime you have a crossing of the body. Those are called cross lateral movements. And this helps to integrate right and left sides of the brain. And I wrote here, including coloring. Well, so if you color, the action of coloring actually helps to integrate like both sides of the brain, right, left sides. So there are simple ways you can do that. And if you want to know more about cross lateral movements, then I would go to um, Energetic You. I forget which episode it was. It was like one of the first seven episodes I did, but Energetic You, and I did it with my friend, osteopath and energy healer, um, Dr. Maria Kaufman. So take a look at that. So I hope you had a great time with me today exploring these intangible topics of the masculine and feminine. And maybe you have some ways to back out and look at that grander perspective of yourself, learn about yourself, see what areas you could support yourself and be more compassionate and caring for yourself. And just little steps every day, small things done consistently can yield extraordinary results. So that's all I have for you today. Lots of love to you. I know this is a huge topic. We could talk about this all day and for weeks on end. It would be never ending. Um, but it, I wanted to break it down to these bite-sized chunks. And if you have any questions about it, I would love to explore it with you. You can find me at, on my website, allworldshealth.com, on Instagram at allworldshealth, and on Facebook at allworldshealth and pediatrics, and lots of love to you. It's Dr. Arlene Diamko, the multidimensional MD. I'll see you next time, Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great and beautiful day, and lots of love. Take care.